This is the Notorious Three. Yep. The big three villains of any Twitter. Yep. Right here in studio. It's me, Digibro, as always, on my channel, and joining me is Nino. Yep. Yeah, well grown people, how you doing? What's as well like? as Econ. I just resent being called a villain. I think I'm the good guy. Okay. Well, every villain thinks every they're the good guy. Every villain thinks they're the good guy. That's the point. Well, That's the point. What, whether or not you're a villain <laughs> only depends on whether 51% of society would regard you as a villain. I think 51% <laughs> of people who've interacted with you at least mm -hmm. would consider you a villain. Yeah. I have uh, the most Do you want to know something funny? Do you want to know something funny that happens? Actually, you're the second most complaints I've received on my Discord, which you weren't in for long enough. Who's libido the most, comment. Is libido number comment one. is number one. Yeah. Libido comment. I don't want to. I don't want to tell tales out of school, but like he's, he. I've interacted with him. I, I'll talk to you about him off. off he's my, a performance he, artist. He's a, Is he really a performance artist? I think so. You think he so? He helps people fulfill uh, their deep uh, dark fantasies. Yeah. That's how it works. He, he's like. I'm an church. artist. I'm a performance artist. Is he's he, like uh, the church of uh, Otacism is his whole it, thing. <laughs> is it real? Like, what, what thing is, what he, thing he is. He worships how otaku it, culture as, how, like, the how only he, pure. He's basically, like, if you if a white nationalist was a white nationalist for otaku specifically yeah. as a race. Like, yeah. Like, regarding otaku as a race. It basically, you know how the Nazis kind of pulled, pulled uh, a lot of their ideas and feelings about the world from old pulpy sci-fi and stuff? He's kind of doing that same kind of fascism, but with otaku shit. First of all, what the fuck does this like, have to do with fascism? Like, no, 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 no. You can't no, just no, throw no, around no, words no. like this for yo, no reason. Yo, let me explain. He, when, when you, you, you have, I don't, I think this is the reason why I didn't want to talk about libido comic, because I have to explain this to you, <laughs> So it's like, so, so, how, is his name, I think his name is Harold? I don't know. Uh, Howard Blast. Howard, yeah. I don't want to abduct him, but whatever. But like, I mean, he goes by both names online, Yeah, so, so he's an interesting fellow, because... What he does is he tries to use anime culture as his pretext for why there should be like a, a sovereign state of anim of like anime minded people yeah. who uh, uh, who have their own country and their own like, like it's it's it, it, it's a it's a it's a silly in the end it's just a bunch of teenagers who take their fandom too seriously. He's he's like, he's not a teenager. Yeah. That's the that's the that's okay, the that's it, the guy. I think, here. I'm pretty sure he's a parody. I mean, if yeah. you watch his videos, he does yeah, not like, come off as very sincere. I, and I've I, talked to him a lot because he's in my Discord. I've so talked like, I've talked to him before as well. But like, I get complaints. There are people who cannot stand him or Econ because mm. they are insensitive. I mean, I'm, I'm not in your Discord, so I don't think... Well, I, th I, think, I think, what's it called, the way I'm insensitive is a lot different from the way What's-His-Face is insensitive. Yeah. Who? Um, Libido. Libido. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've oh, talked no, to him no, before. No. I think he's kind of a douche. Oh, I mean, yeah. But, I mean... You can be a douche, too. We are all we all can be douchebags. Yeah, that's why I'm true. saying that we are the three... Because most people who present themselves in the space of the internet try to be very clean in their image. You gotta stop rummaging with shit on the desk. That is gonna pick up on the mic. Yeah. Um, you know, most most people try to maintain a very clean image and not call people out, not say anything when they see something, and uh, we ain't like that. I mean, if you say so, what's it called? You are definitely somebody who calls something out when you see it, when you think it's not right. Yeah, but I, I don't usually think I'm all that malicious. Or no, you're. It doesn't. It, it's not about being malicious. It's about being contentious in any way is frowned upon in this age. Like most anti-tubers would not even attempt through their Twitter to like, you know, aggress upon people who have espoused opinions they think are wrong. You know, but you know, I I don't think that's necessarily like such a. Um, how should I say, like a patrolling thing, you know? Like, I, I've confronted a lot of people I disagree with, and I think that's led to a lot of open I conversation. I do think, though, such. however, you cannot deny that you are a baiter because you open conversations with more extreme opinions than you really hold in order to get people more outraged when they argue with you so that they'll present better arguments. That is baiting. Yeah, the mm, face he's yeah. making is one of total admittance. So I think being a baiter qualifies you as a villain on uh, on the internet. I don't know. I, I, I think you that can't. You can't. What? You're literally pulling your villain stick right now. Like literally, the the way the, 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 <laughs> the, the way you the way you enact your villainy is through what literally what you're doing right now. You you perniciously try and present yourself as the most reasonable voice while saying things that the other side disagrees but with. But the thing vehemently. is, if you hesitate for more than ten <laughs> seconds, it's obvious that you agree with what you just heard and you can't find a way out. It's like 
shit, he's right. I am a baiter. Fuck. What justification can I think of in this? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I kind of admit to being a baiter. I think you're right in that. Yeah. I was just considering for a second. Okay. But I, I do think you're right in that. <coughs> but I don't necessarily think that's always a negative thing. It's not that it's yeah. always a negative I, I, thing. Just, just the next stage. It's just the next stage. Yeah, he's throwing, it's, throwing, it's, the, he's throwing it's, out it's, the next attack. It's, inher- <laughs> it's inherently manipulative. And all of us, uh, I think, are people who are who we... we, we would, would you not say rhetoric is inherently manipulative? It is. It is. It is. Yeah. But... We are people who choose to participate in rhetoric, and that makes us among the likes of advertisers in terms of our outlook on the standard person. We would, you like to engage, you you probably would not choose to engage with somebody if you didn't think that they could respond in an interesting way, um, which is why I don't think that you are malicious, because you're not trying to bait people who you know are stupid. Like, someone like Destiny, that guy, what he goes out of his way to do is to, like, bait people into debating with him who he knows are stupid and can't defend their points. And, like, most of his videos are him just, like, utterly obliterating people who are just not very good at debate because he's he's using the fact that he has that rhetorical skill to to prey on people who aren't good in that realm, who don't realize that that's really what they're stepping into because they're dumb, which is, I mean, it's fine. Those people deserve to be made fun of, and I, I understand why people enjoy it, but I just think he's a douchebag for doing it, you know? But I don't think you're like that. I don't think you want to, you don't want to, like, show people up. You sincerely want people to come away thinking what you think and uh, changing their mind. Um, and I think that the only reason that people don't acquiesce as often is because you are aggressive, and you're not, uh, you're not like a, you I don't, you don't come to them as like a pampering them the way that a lot of I people. I think I go. acquiesce to people more than they acquiesce to me. Oh, I think absolutely. Yeah. But you have to, you have, to, if you want to be a content creator who is seen as clean, you have to bend over backwards for people. Like you have to bring it all the way to their doorstep. You cannot expect them to come halfway. You know, like you can't expect them to be. Because because they are always going to look at you just because of a number next to your name. They're going to look at you as like a, more than a human being. Like they're looking at you as like a condescension from above. You know, somebody with clout leveraging it against them. Um, and uh, you know, for a lot of them, it makes them afraid, and they will become apologetic. But for a lot of people, you know, like they're just going to look at you as like being more like because you have a reputation. It's like oh, here comes econ. You know, what's he got to say about this? Well, I think that actually, that's actually a good point, because when you bring in things like cloud power, what's it called, influence into it all, it kind of deep, deep balance, destabilizes the playing field of an argument, right? Yeah. You're not talking on That's why grounds. 4chan is anonymous. That's yeah, that's like why 4chan is anonymous. That's what's, one, one that's what's interesting about 4chan. But when you, when you have this kind of uneven playing field, it creates a different... Um, different rhetorical structure because you're not trying to convince one another the person on the lower half is always struggling to try to reach up higher and the high one person higher can be more dismissive mm-hmm. or at least that's kind of the impression people will get right so maybe that's where this idea that you have come from because you're used to kind of having so many subscribers and being on top yeah and so when you talk to someone you conversations naturally end up that way yeah you I are mean, you I, are the authority I'm they are somebody, trying to demonstrate that to you i'll tell you i'm somebody who holds back like as much as i can mm-hmm. but i still am way more aggressive than most yeah. people because basically i will match whatever <coughs> ferocity people come at me with mm-hmm. so if somebody comes at me with like a lot of attitude mm-hmm. i'm going to match the attitude back at them because i want them to know that i'm as offended as they are that they are offended you know yeah, but like so I want them to have this feeling of like, oh shit, maybe I overstepped my boundaries, or you know, maybe they'll, maybe they, if they're really, if they're really, what they're saying is true, they'll get just as angry back and they'll reply and we'll keep going that way, you know. But like, uh, I, so a lot of the time, what my actual initial response is in my head to a comment. Mm-hmm. Uh, has to be thrown away, you know? Like, that's the version that does not get posted, because... I, I do think, though, you're right in saying there's there's almost the kind of responsibility you have to have, whether you like it or not, when you become yeah. a figure of authority, because of this dynamic, and because of the fact that people start trusting <laughs> you, um, what's it called, implicitly, mm-hmm. right? So once you become this figure of authority and somewhat influential, you can't just be someone expressing their opinion, there's more expected upon you, and for you to not achieve that is a faux pas. For example, recently yeah. with the Gainax stuff, right? What's it called? I was reporting some stuff I read on Japanese websites and on yeah. 4chan, 
and I was doing it on Twitter, and then like a <coughs> crap load of people saw it. My fault. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then um, it got retweeted a bunch, and then <coughs> like somebody pointed out, oh, this is inaccurate here, 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 and here. You should feel bad about it. You yeah. should. They were really shame trying to put you. you down, and I was like, dude, you just corrected it, so now it's fixed. Like, well, who the fuck well, cares? No, no, no. The public record will show in the end what no, the because, truth is. No, because because not as many people will see his comment as mine. I, I mean, so we so, can, so yeah, but look, all it takes is for when we bring it up again to say that. Like every time, like next time you talk about it, say what because. The conversation never stops at the first time somebody makes a tweet about maybe it. Maybe like, not, maybe not, but, but at the same time, it is still, to some extent, spreading misinformation. And I guess I don't see myself as somebody of an authority figure. Um, I, I see myself as some guy who's just dicking around, commenting on stuff he found on the internet. I, I, think, but, I think that to minimize the speed at which you broke a story that might not have even really broke like into the community in the mm-hmm. way that it did, had you not done it. Like... Th- think of it this way like uh, that report came out somebody's immediately translating it because it and that m- gives people the impression that it's important because mm-hmm. if it just comes out as an anime news network story mm-hmm. uh, maybe people will tweet about it and that story will spread if somebody who reads that story thinks like oh shit this is interesting and like post about it but the fact that you were translating it before that even happened it, it like it's magnetic it makes people think like oh shit breaking news you know so that's why I wanted to capitalize I'm, I'm, on that as well and got a video out that night because I was like, if, you know, because it'll feel that way to my viewers as well. It'll just be like, Otto oh, exposes guy I mean, next. Oh, fuck. I, I'm, not saying what, I'm not saying what I did or what you did was wrong. I'm yeah. saying I should see myself as somebody with these responsibilities upon me. And so when I, you know, report on something like that, even though I don't think of myself as a reporter, I think of myself as someone who's dicking around. This responsibility has now been thrust on me, so I should be aware of that and try to yeah. be more accurate in the future. That, that's, oh, I mean, that's I, the point of my see, comedy. the thing is, I don't, I don't think uh, um, maybe that person, you know, wants to make sure that you are aware that you made mistakes mm-hmm. and just that the truth gets out there. But like, there's no need to rub your nose in in your shit over this. Like, obviously, you would not have made these mistakes had you not been trying to break the story as fast as possible. Like you knew there would probably be reliable translation later. It's a long-ass article. Like, you gave a Cliff Notes version of a long article that thankfully, I mean, I read through the whole thing with Google Translate, and it was pretty easy to understand. Mm-hmm. And I, I I had already not, like, from reading the article myself, I had already known you were wrong about those things. And I, I say it the correct way in my video. Yeah. Like, I show your tweet, but I say what is actually correct. Mm-hmm. So... You know, like it. All, the record was already straight by. You know, my video has seventy thousand views. That's the biggest break of that story that there yeah. is. You know, like the correct information's in the video. So for people to act like we were spreading all this misinformation because you, you know, very quickly translated this article and made it relevant, is is really insulting to me. And I'm, the reason I'm going so far as to say all this is that our, there are other anti tubers who were very much like aggressively saying, like, you know, I think Pedro was mad at you for these mistakes and was, uh, like, oh, there's misinformation flying around, so here's a more proper, uh, rundown, you know? <laughs> I mean... It's just like, that's a subtweet, my dude. I know a subtweet when I see it. <laughs> you know a subtweet when I see it. <laughs> no, but the, but the point is, like, when, when uh, you know, people confront me like that on Twitter, usually I will change my mind to some extent. Like, there were a lot of people I started off arguing with a lot, or being on completely different sides of the aisle with. Like, I'm a m- manga pirate. I scanslate things in my free time. So I was talking with one with um, some of the people who were working on official versions of the things I scanslated, and they were, you know, predictably very mad. But, you know, after some, you know, getting to know one another on Twitter, some concessions from both sides, some really rational debate, you know, we actually became fast friends. I um, what's it called? got beers with him it's, in it's Seattle. All, it's all about butting heads with your, each other's autism. It's yeah, like right? my autism versus yours. What, like, why do I think what I did is justified? Mm-hmm. Why do you think it's not? And once we hear each other's reasons, sometimes, you know, the puzzle pieces fit together. The autism yeah, speaks right? puzzle pieces. So, 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 so it's about both sides, or at least yourself having the intention of conceding some points or the willingness to say, a bit, you're wrong. Yeah. But I'm wrong, you're right, and, you know, let's work from there. And, you know, only once you allow yourself to admit the possibility that you're wrong can the other person also feel comfortable doing so. Mm-hmm. So point is, I'm even-handed, I'm balanced, and I'm not a fucking villain. There we go. Okay, well, we go. Uh, 
anti-hero. Anti-hero, yeah. A Byronic hero. Anti-hero, I think we all look at ourselves as anti-hero. I think we all look at ourselves, we all want to be anti-hero. We all want to be anti-hero. I mean, I've got, I don't know. This don't man's really, got letters on his jacket. That's really, an anti-hero look right <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Is it really? Yeah. It's just, it's just kanji, like. People have kanji on their clothing. People, yeah, people are yakuza. Yeah, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> no, yakuza have tattoos. They don't. They don't. Yeah, every, every, everybody no, wants. No, I, I mean like uh, biker gangs, like Bak- Japanese. Oh, Bosozoku. Yeah. Yo, everybody guys. wants to be Batman, but we probably all end up Rorschach. No, oh, no. That's, don't, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. Kill that's me! Nasty. That's nasty. <laughs> They, 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 oh. So I wanted us to talk about a subject that you are currently very entrenched in. It seems like what you your your interests have shifted very heavily. So actually, let me give a little bit of backstory here because we've never done a podcast of just the three of us before. No, uh, I don't think so. Um, I'm gonna tell the story of how we know each other. You've been in a couple of my videos. Mm-hmm. We've done things together. Yeah, like... But never the three of us in one connected setting. Because yeah. it's very bizarre that we all three know each other, um, considering that you were reading my blog fucking 12 years ago, yeah. and then you guys met in person. Yeah. And then you and I know each other from YouTube. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah, that's basically the story. Econ's been reading my blog since forever. So you've been around... What you, you set, When you say, when you say the word... Since the beginning of my Since forever, blog. you imply that I've been reading it consistently until now, which is not true. Well, okay, that's fair. You don't... I mean, it's not like you read everything I post, either. Like, no, but, 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 there, was, like but there, a, there was definitely... You're not a fan but there was definitely you. But there was definitely a point where I was reading you consistently with other right. anime bloggers, and then one big purple, vaguely horse-shaped blotch that kind of ended yeah, that spree. yeah. So, uh, but you you probably started following my blog like a year or two after I started it yeah, in 2007. Like so, uh, when did you start watching anime, though? Like, how long has this been? I don't know. When I was a kid, I think I saw G Gundam when I was like six. Because, like, all three of us have been into anime for like a, for what, for this generation is now <coughs> a preposterously long time. Not because we're like... We're not old fags, you know, like, none of us have been around since the Stone Age. We're not yeah. Justin Sarabas. But we just all, it just so happens that we all started watching anime very young and uh, have, like, been consistently watching it forever, mm-hmm. you know. So, I mean, Nino, how long have you been, when did uh, you start? When did I start? See, that's, it's always a weird question because it's like, Everyone always has that, and like everybody always has that thing of, oh, I know, I didn't know what anime was, but yeah. I was watching it. I and mean, I was a huge for, Pokemon. For, I, for, like, for most if people, I look back to it, it, for me, it's like my whole life I was yeah. watching Japanese shit. Like, it, I didn't know yeah, what it no, was. No, but yeah, like for, for most people, it's like, oh, I saw Pokemon and I didn't know it was anime, and yeah. I, oh, I saw Digimon, da, da, da. but for me, it was a bit different because I had a cousins, and they had a trunk of just old Asian cassette tapes. And then they had the the old uh, where they burned the subtitles onto the onto the actual tape itself. Yeah. So they had a bunch of those, and that Excellent. like that they that one they they had like Akira and like Ghost in the Shell and stuff. Of course. And I had no idea what what they were, but I just watched them, and I was yeah. they were there, and I didn't know it was anime until like oh five, when I stumbled upon the Shonen Jump website. How old were you in oh five? I was. Because you guys are both younger than me, I was, and I already am like, it's weird that people treat me like I'm a fucking guru. Like, I started in 2001, but like, that to me, like, the people I was reading at the time had started in the 80s and 90s, you know? So like, to me, I was young. I was 11 and all you know? five, yeah. Like, I could never think of myself as like an anime guru, because I have not seen shit from the, like a lot of shit from the 60s, 70s, 80s. You know, like, I have tons of catching up to do. But, like, yeah, I mean, if I think, you think of somebody who knows stuff from the 90s and 2000s as, a, like, an old anime fan, then I'm an old anime fan, you I know? Mean, I mean, Because even people my age might have gotten into it two or three years ago and are just as passionate about it as I am, yeah. you know? And I think that's kind of an application of, like, the whole Dunning-Kruger thing, right? Yeah. Once ago, that you've kind of gotten to the point where you're far surpassing most people, but because of how much you know, you also know how much you don't know. Right. Yeah. And well, that means it's the opposite of the Dunning-Kruger. Effect. Well, yeah, well, the Dunning-Kruger yeah. curve is a curve, you know? It's mostly used right. to refer to the peak where people are stupid but think they're smart. Right. But now it's like people actually know quite a bit, but because they yeah. understand how, what no, to, yeah. how much I, they don't I'm, know. I yeah. am that, that... I saw Cthulhu when I was young, you know, like, because... 
when I got into anime, I already thought of it as like a massive thing because mm-hmm. the the two things that got me big into it was Anime Invasion magazine and Shonen Jump uh, coming out in America, and like both of those tried to make it look like anime was a huge universe of shit like they wanted you to know yeah. there was tons of stuff that you could look into because that's how they were going to get you hooked so I, think for me, I knew it right from the start there was just tons of shit I think know? for me I actually had to transition into understanding anime on that level especially when I was younger when I was like when I was like 12, 13 and first getting into yeah. Bleach it was like oh there's Bleach and I know about Naruto and I know there's Dragon Ball so I guess anime is this yeah. but then I had this teacher who I think I talked to you about her like uh, my te- I had this uh, teacher in freaking ninth grade who when you finished your your school shit like mm-hmm. she would let you read anything from her collection of manga and she like started like a little anime club at the school I was at and like she actually got us she got me into like that was that was me be- being introduced to seasonal anime o- o- mm-hmm. almost in a, in a more or less like that way like that's how I saw Vampire Night that's how I saw Nabari no O like when I was still in like middle school, so it's like I I understood that oh anime isn't just shonen. Anime is like this big vast world, and yeah. I came when I came to America, I was able to start like using the internet properly because like let me just say watching anime out in like in a post colonial country like it, that's not in America or like yeah. you know the United Kingdom or whatever or anywhere with quote unquote fast internet. It's especially back in the mid two thousands. I mean, I fucking yeah. couldn't watch anything online until at least 2007, mm. you know, so... I mean, that's kind of the case for everybody, right? Like, online streaming didn't really take off until then. Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I didn't, knew people I didn't who have had... LimeWire or anything like that, because I had fucked up my computer with that shit, so I just stayed away yeah. from it. Yeah, like, in the early days, you know, you had, I had, you, DVDs. had, you, had you had, like, XDCC and IRC and stuff, but, you know, what's it called? There wasn't, like, a very publicly acceptable, accessible yeah. thing, you know? Um, yeah, man... I mean, I had to, the transitionary period that I would describe, like, even though I knew anime was big from the start, all I cared about was action shows for yeah, the right. longest time. And then, like, when I got onto the Mega Tokyo forums and everybody on there was, like, hype about Haruhi <coughs> and fucking Canon and Air, and I watched all that shit, and I was like, oh my god, I can't, like, lie. I can't pretend that I don't want to watch shows about girls, mm-hmm. so, uh... This is this is it now. I'm the Moe man. Like that was literally like the second I laid eyes on Moe. I like okay, I used to I don't know if I told you guys this, but uh I used to only watch anime like in periods where nobody could see me watching it cuz uh-huh. I didn't want them to see me watching shows with girls in them. Like yeah. so and I was watching like Manabi Straight and Hitamari Sketch like when they came to air. Yeah, those were so, the times. So like and this was, and I was talking about it on the Mega Tokyo forums. So like, I would only watch anime either early in the morning before I went Wait, to well, school. You know, can I just Wait, lamp, can, I, can, I, can I just can yeah. I just lampshade how weird this is that you just didn't want to make, let people see you watching cartoons okay. with girls in them? Like, it's like, like, really weird. Wait, the it's Mega very Tokyo weird. Forum? Let me explain. Okay, I grew up when I was a kid. I like insistently was like anti girl. Anti girl. Well, didn't like, you look like a girl? Yes. <laughs> I think that was part of why, but like, because people would always say I was a girl and it pissed me off. Um, and like, I didn't think I looked like a girl, even though I objectively did. Like, there's <laughs> no question. Um, and, uh, but, you know, it, it made me really mad. And then, like, I also just, like, my mom would always tease me about things pertaining to girls. So I was just kind of like, no, I don't like girls. Like, I'm a kid forever. I'll never like girls. Because oh I, I also was like, I'm a kid forever. I'll always play with toys. I'll never not like toys. Like, I mean, that, that hadn't you know, changed. I was just, I, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't play with toys. So I clearly that did change. I don't actually put What about, what about this toy right here, huh? The bong? Is that a toy? I'm All pretty right, sure well, that's a toy. If, if you say so, then it's the same thing. But um, it wouldn't have meant the same thing to me as a child. Uh, but any anyway, so you threw me off with that. I forgot what I was talking about. I don't know. But, but, but I'm surprised. I, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Just that, like, I, I, I wanted nothing to do with girls. And then, like, once I finally started developing, like, you know, once I started getting, uh, you know, going through puberty, it's like, oh, shit, I cannot ignore uh, that I like yes, girls, you the, know. The, the, but, like, I didn't want, I really did not want to have to talk about it to my parents at all. So I basically just put up a front oh, so you at knew, all and times. You knew, and you knew they saw you watching anime, like. Well, like, I didn't want them to think I liked girls or was interested. And also, like, 
the thing is that I had gone through a really fucking weird, rough period in when I was 14 uh, when we moved to the ghetto, and I did not make any friends because I went to an all-black school, and I was a long-haired white boy, and it was very weird. Mm. And they called me Joe Dirt because I had a spotty beard. <laughs> uh, Yo, black people are funny, bro. Yeah. No, black people are always funny. Joe Dirt. I can imagine people calling you Joe Dirt. Yeah. You, do, you do have that vibe. You should have seen my beard. Now, now you look you like, come up with now you look like the dude. Uh, mm. like, now you look, yeah. like, now you look no, more like... Obviously. Yeah. Big Lebowski. Yeah, Big Lebowski. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, the... The the experience uh, it was, I was more like connecting with the girl characters more so than like oh, I mean, wanting to like like it wasn't I wasn't watching sexual shows I wasn't watching fan service shows you know that's I'm watching Peter Murray no, sketch and I'm sure know? and I'm Are sure that's the re- that made it more weird to you yeah because if people if people saw you watching a non sexual show with just a bunch of little girls yeah stuff, a bunch that would of look weird, even, like, that would look a bunch even of cute little weird. girls so like so I'm just like Peter Murray okay. sketch non sexual though. I mean, I, that's don't like the time I do not regard the Hitamari sexually. That's, that's I, mean, I, like I, know, I know many people who broke in their mind. I mean, okay, let me, let me not like, say that. At the time, yes, I regarded them sexually, but only in Yuri context. Okay. I used to I, I only many, your fantasize about Yuri at that age. I, 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 knew not many men, I knew many men who broke their nut, nut blackguard. Yeah, yes, I broke my dimension. nut bladder to the wideness of, of Peter Murray's skin. Oh my god, for sure. But anyway, but like, yeah, that's almost like the time my mom walked in on me watching Joshi Puro, jo- like women's pro wrestling. Yeah, like, that's like she she walked in and she saw it was on my computer. I was and I'm, I'm I I don't even care because like you know yeah. it's whatever. It's my mom. Like she can see what I'm watching. Like yeah. and she looks at she looks at it and she's like, what is this?" And like Japanese women's wrestling. She just looks at it like, "You have some weird interests," and just walks away. I was like, "Well." I mean, I don't like, know what I don't know what I, don't know I was what, yeah, necessarily like, afraid of, other than having to have a conversation with any member of my family. Like, but yeah. like, I just straight up, like, I would I would wake up like several hours before school, <coughs> watch a few episodes in the morning, and then I would get on the computer because Victor had a computer in his room, I did not. So I would go into his room and just watch like three episodes before he got home, and that was my rhythm: six episodes a day, and I would just churn through shows. Uh, six episodes a day. Hmm. Yeah, I, I did something similar. But you brought you brought up the Megatron and then I got a computer. Then I his I basically stole his computer uh-huh. by way of we watched Genshiken and then we decided to make my room into a Genshiken <laughs> and so we moved everything into my That's room really and then cool, it yeah. stayed there and nobody came in and I took Victor's computer and I watched anime at a much higher rate because my friend introduced me to Torrance mm-hmm. and then the doors of Valhalla were open. open. What's it called? But you, you brought up Mega Tokyo for me, so that brings back a lot of memories. I was on there too. That was like what a. What was your name on the Mega Tokyo? I don't fucking remember. That was like twenty years ago. You were ubiquitous in my comments. Yeah, I don't know what I was on there. Maybe it was the same. It was probably the same. Not, something like that. I feel like you. I. I'm sure we interacted somehow on the Mega Tokyo. I remember. I do remember I'm that that, sure. that those forums at the been. time were like one of the best places to talk to talk about anime. It was. Internet. It was crazy. Like it's All hard the to explain were to people there, like, because the only reason for it, I think, it really was Omo Ikane that that drove that. The, the yeah, admin, Omo, Omo did because he he had he, his own blog too. Yeah. Well, I used to read it. Uh, uh, <coughs> I hate that guy, but you hate that guy. Well, really, yeah, I like that guy. I have fought many times over what. I'm a, you know, you know, over things, wait, who, over opinions who, wait, about I, I, I anime. Was, was, what the fuck else listening. do people who, fight who about? Fight, who, who, who you fight with? About, fight. About, no, I mean, like, what specifically? Who, he got uh, who, mad at who my you review with? of Girlish Number, and then I got mad at his getting mad at me, and now I'm mad forever. <laughs> wait, who are you That's talking how it about? works. You, uh, you, don't, you don't know this guy. It's an admin of the Mega Tokyo forums, really? a guy named Omo. And yeah. he, he's a very old, old fan. Um, and I thought uh, you liked Girlish Number. I love Girlish Number. We all liked it. He was mad at me for liking it wrong. That's, <laughs> that's what this is. That's the level of autism we're on. Oh gosh! But uh, anyway, that's the that's the deepest way to disagree with someone. Like, yeah, like, when exactly. When you both like the same thing, when you like it wrong, like that's that's because, religious. Because I'm not, that's how religion. Because works. I am not a I am not a seiyu otaku, and he is, and so I my perspective on it is not that of a seiyu otaku, and therefore it is invalid. You don't, in you don't have to call him a seiyu otaku if Say, you're mad I, at him. You call him a koe buta. A koe buta. That's what they called him. Koe buta. Voice picks. Okay, oh my God. so that's like the that, insult that's for the, that's the, that, that's the kind of that's the kind we, that's the kind I'm, of Seiyu fan. I'm glad fan. I have something I don't have to. That's say. That's the kind of Seiyu fan that goes to Rei Tanaka's like side yeah, event with a that's crowbar. The, that's, 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 the of, that's the type of dude who has the hop on with the freaking lights, just running around, going crazy at the show. Well, like. no, it's the kind of guy who 
you know, goes to their houses, stalks them, and kills some people occasionally. That's okay. that's a koi buta. That's nasty. It's always nice to get to drop. Oh, so another those piece are the, are those are the dudes lingo. who who put a Hanakawa. Uh, no, not Hanakawa. Um, what's her fucking name? Ah, Aya Hirano out of a career. Hmm? Are those the kinds of dudes who put Aya Hirano out of a career? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 I, I, don't, I don't think I, that, that was I like a point of connection. Obo would be yeah. one of those people, though. He was a fan of her. Yeah. I don't think he turned on her. He's, like a, he's a good guy. It just, well, well, just a fucking, you know, just a fucking internet asshole like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, man. He's that just was. as bad as you or me or you. Yo, we hey, hate, man. Uh, I'm not. I'm not as bad as people say. I'm. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, you I, tweet I, so much. I you not anymore. So I not anymore. Much. I've I've changed my ways. I have turned over a new leaf. I no longer have. I mean, the, I, the I, don't, I don't think you're particularly mean. I, I, just, I, I just feel like your tweets are like poorly thought out. I, I don't. I no longer have the patience, and and I'm. You know what? You're right. You can't. I'm trying. I'm trying to do the thing where I think out what I say. And a lot of people misunderstand what I mean when I say things. And therefore, I'm just going to... If people misunderstand what you mean when you say things, the fault is on you. Yeah. yeah that's it's because I, like, he literally does not put any thought yeah. before it goes to text. It goes yeah. straight from dumb to text. <laughs> yeah. So therefore... He's trying to freestyle via tweets, but nobody understands the context of what's happening. So they think he's just gone insane. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. But you, but you said all this was like set up for something you were going to talk about. Yes, we were going to talk. Well, uh, we haven't really gotten to how you guys met. Like you read me on the forums. Uh, we were both. We on met. We met. Show. We met at the rebellion the movie. Like yeah, that, that was what like six seven it, years ago uh, in twenty twelve. Like, yeah, we, we met that at the rebellion. So no, fucking twenty thirteen. Oh, twenty thirteen. Like, yeah. Yeah, like did seven eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah. What's like, I was going to watch it with my Thai bodybuilder friend. Yep. Yep. Um and like I. I think like what's it called? We were at a diner, and then I saw Jimmy, and we got to talking. No, you were talking about Thai friend first, and then yeah. we got to talking, and then Jimmy was like, "Hey man, I'm broke. Can I get a ride?" Oh my gosh! No, he, le, le, no. Let me tell you the exact thing that happened because he likes to make me look out. He make, he likes to make me out to be the the complete idiot in this situation. I said, "Yeah, I'm about to walk. I'm about to walk to the mall station and head home." And you said, "My friend Ben's coming to pick us up. Do you you, you, you like you can get a ride with us to the mall station?" You were kind enough to offer me that, so that's how we, you all, all extended the olive branch, and that's how kind of how we became friends. I'm sorry. I'm like, sorry. You're right. But the I, one, the one time this guy does something nice, he forgets it. and wants to make it sound like he's be. I wants to make it sound like I did. I was the fucking most oh, Jimmy, the situation. Jimmy, I, that's I, the I funniest apologize. part about I'm this apologize. relationship. I'm apologize. That's I'm why this relationship is so hilarious. I that's why. That's why we. Oh gosh. Okay, so just to explain what just happened real quick, uh, while you guys were telling your story, I blacked out. Because this room had no oxygen in it. In fact, that fan is not even on. So there's currently still no... no Nothing ventilating this room. But we were doing bong hits in here and it filled up with smoke. And I blacked out and my face hit the keyboard. Is it plugged in all the way? I don't know. I can't tell. It looks like it's plugged in. Well... So we had to get a breather. We had to get some bars. Mm-hmm. You want me to go first? Yeah, you can go first. Okay. I can't believe this is gonna be on a fucking podcast. Yeah, because. yeah, yeah. Fucked up like Gozu. I drag dudes into the sewers and I, then I get them pro tools so that they can make their own shit. Then I listen to it and then I steal it. Cause I gotta have something to flow mm. on. I don't need to give no credit cause mm. I am a motherfucking thief. I don't give a fuck, bitch. Mm. I just wanna make trees. I just wanna smoke weed. All day, that's my dream. No pain, no gain. And yet, motherfuckers all say the same thing. Motherfuckers all say the same thing, and ain't nobody really make change. But I got some change, and I'ma just go and buy a Rillo, roll a blunt, and smoke it on my pillow. Who the fuck they won't talk about? I'm that dude who brings all the routes out. I might change your mouth, and if you talk trash, I might end your cloud. Yeah. You should have tried a different way by me I don't understand why these niggas stay by me If you niggas really try and talk about that type I might show you how these niggas make a play by me Wait, uh, wait, well, okay, the beat's done Well, whatever, anyway <laughs> My brain was... might have stopped tonight, but I'm still alright Because I'm gonna bite some sick rhymes and then fight okay, the then fight. criminal and the cr- Fight the criminal and the worst thing in the world Fight the criminal 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 f
Right. Man, I'm on a tour beat, tour beat, tour beat. Man, I'm on a tour beat. What? Man, I'm coming in, gonna come for the spot. Man, I come in, wanna come for the drop. Man, I come in, wanna come for the drop. Wanna come for the spot. Wanna come for the drop. Wait, wait, what? Oh, let me stop. Yeah, let me, let me know. Anyway, right. you guys were telling the story about how you met. Yeah, so yes, basically, so, so basically, we met at a uh, <coughs> a Madoka Rebellion showing. Yeah, I think you got most of the details. Yeah, out, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. We got most of the details before out. you fucking before you passed out. Yeah, like, no, I literally died. Did Digi was Digi? You, you are such a goblin. I hope you know that. Like, I know. Hey, Jesus, <laughs> I think that's probably the worst I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> you it might be my lowest. <laughs> oh, yeah, gosh. yeah. You you need to cut down your. Was it called weed? That was no, a, I'm that, that, I already was planning to quit, but then you guys were showing up, and I was like, well, uh, excuses. Well, excuses. let's throw this out with a bang. Hey, let's do this that's, as big as we how, can. That's how you do it. I yeah. might have to quit, too, but hey, who knows? That's bullshit. You know you're not going to do it. You Anything can be done with hard work and determination. Which yeah. you do lack. You can say that, but anyone can. Even, even trash can surpass the elite. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well... So you guys met, then I just happened to visit Atlanta for completely unrelated reasons, not even intending to hang out with you at all, because I didn't know where in Atlanta you lived, Mm -hmm. although I figured I would try to at least contact you. Mm -hmm. So I did when we got there, and you happened to be right where we were. So we were like, all right. And it, the person who was guiding us around Atlanta was uh, absolutely incompetent. Really? At, uh, well, because she... Oh, yeah, the, Jackie didn't know Atlanta that well. She, well, she didn't really live in the city. She lived, like, 30 minutes yeah. away. So when and you like, met me, I was able to, like, actually show you around places. and like. Yeah, well, like, I mean, her kind of concept of what we were going to do is, like, hang out with her friends. And, like, her idea of, like, sell us on moving here is, like, look at the people you can hang out with. I have no interest in your friends. I don't yeah. give a fuck about your friends. They don't even seem interesting at all. Yeah. They seem like very regular people. People, you know, uh, I wanted to see the city and be sold on the city, you mm-hmm. know. So like, she had no idea what to show us. We're just like wandering aimlessly around downtown Atlanta until I called and, you. And who better to sell you on the city than somebody right. who, just like you who lives here? Like, yeah, well, and you are also somebody who gets around and like goes <coughs> places. You yeah, know? Like, you do not stay still. So, uh, and then we started going around town, and then you. Econ was supposed to hang out with you that day and watch Shin Godzilla. Mm. He was very pissed that you were blowing him off. <laughs> and you didn't want to tell him... Uh, you wanted to, like, surprise him by, you know, revealing mm-hmm. that I was there. Yeah. Um, Your idea of a surprise was telling me to hold on a second for three hours while I was circling around 285. More driving. Or less. Yeah. More yeah. Or less. So, That's, yeah. I mean, uh, in the end, it was pretty worth it, but, you know... That, that was a that's all you have. That's all you have to say. That, that was a pretty shitty surprise. That's all you have to say. Yeah, yeah well... It was uh, it was funny, and we then we immediately we of course as three old school otaku just spent the rest of that day doing nothing but talking about otaku shit. Yeah, uh, and it was pretty much like I mean that was and you're like oh yeah this guy was like reading your blog I remembered who you were so I was like oh shit mm-hmm. uh, and then like I basically convinced you to become a YouTuber um, yep. because I was like there's like there's not enough like. People were were asking me to care about, like, basically being better. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you can't thrust all the responsibility (laughs) on me. I'm the only old school anime blogger who's even doing this. If you, we need more of them, and that's like, where if the, you and have that's this knowledge, the, you bring this knowledge and, and, out. And that's please. why he. That's, I, that's why I, I let him make you. the. That's why I let him make that video on my channel that got him started on making videos like the. What do you mean you let me make that video on your channel? I paid you to you, edit that you video. No, you didn't pay me. Yes, you, I did. No. Yes, you, I did. You, you bought me tickets to Momocon. That's different. That which, cost ninety dollars, which I then gave to someone else because I had a press pass. That but, doesn't change the fact. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fine. I'm just messing with you. But yeah, no, we made that video because of that exact sentiment, and that's right. why I put that. That's why I put that clip that you like of you, of you talking about that at the beginning. So it's like, yeah, like it. It was it that that moment was kind of like a watershed, I guess, for for mm-hmm. you because that really did let people in on like. The, I won't say the asshole that is you, but like the abrasive personality, and also that there is that there is room for that kind of personality well, you, on the like on the anime sphere. I mean, for what it's worth, econ changed massively since then because mm-hmm. like yeah, I, I don't agree with that video nowadays at no, all. That, yeah, because because I think a lot of it seemed <coughs> to be when you hung out with all the any tubers at Anime Expo because you seem to be very impressed with guys like uh, like uh, like Eye Patch Wolf or the Anime Man and people like that. It's, I mean, I I, I'm, I'm not going to say they're bad people. I did enjoy yeah. hanging out with them. I thought they were great. 
It's more that, you know, I had a, like a shift in perspective, partially a lot because of what I was reading at the time, which was yeah. a lot of stuff on film production, writing, etc. And I started to kind of doubt myself too. You know, I've always been kind of a contrarian, you know, kind of always been a critical asshole and, you know, trying to contradict what everybody's saying, trying to find the flaws in their arguments. And so eventually, I think around that time... Even was, if you agree with what they're saying. Yes. So I was kind of like turning that lens on myself and say, yeah. who who better to challenge than the most contrarian person I know? Right, exactly. And so after that, I kind of had a moment of realization that... I'm working on the man in the mirror. Of, <laughs> like, you know... The most contrarian man. Well, what, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever insight you have, demon. whatever insight you have in the end is worth nothing if nobody listens to you. Yeah. And if I spend all this time honing my knowledge of anime and my understanding of anime, I can't fault, you know, other anti-tubers for, you know, uh, honing their social skills, their personalities, their ability to attract people, because that's arguably more vital than having something relevant to say. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And it's 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 very insulting to me when there are certain people who will who will be very aggressive at me for not like representing something. And I Every, anybody who ever accuses me of anything, I'll just say, like, look, I did what I can. You make a video, you know? And they'll always say, like, well, I don't have... Like, if I make a video, it won't get viewed by a bunch of people. And I'm like, that's because you have to earn that. Like, you, you have to... You have to... You can build a career. You know, you can do what I did. You can get good. You can grind at it for years. And then, when you make a video, yes, as many people will watch your video as will watch mine. But you have to... You know, in order for a video to reach people, you have to grind at that. And, like, you know, what what I try to do is not to be, uh, like, I'm not, a, I'm not a fucking encyclopedia. You know, like, I am not delivering information. I am delivering entertainment via information as a way of kind of just shotgun blasting people with random information that might make them go deeper. You know? Like, because... Really deciding what depth to go into in a video is a is a difficult tightrope because I made um this one called tracing the lineage of Cowboy Bebop where I just went into like the absolute farthest possible depth of just like this person worked on this show this show and this show they worked with this person on this show these are where these people collaborated and it was just literally raw data which is interesting if you already know the stories of all these shows and who these people are it is absolutely not interesting if you don't know these anime because I don't even talk about them you know. So, like, where do you balance the amount of just talking about shows so that people can even grasp it on a basic level and then getting into, like, all this nitty-gritty? Well, you can just toss in bits of it, and then if people get interested in that stuff, they can then go do research and, you know, read the actual encyclopedias that are very easy to find, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that me being a little bit wrong some of the time is ultimately going to, like, spread more infor misinformation I mean, than, uh, it's not, you know. it's not even necessarily about being right or wrong, but yeah. more that there is room for all sorts of different perspectives, right? right? You can have some people who are more comedic and less invested in actually, you know, being pedagogical or education or educational, mm -hmm. you know, less about analysis or research and more about, you know, just bringing up interesting things or having a comedy routine or something like that. Right. You know, these are all different like variations on a spectrum of anime related what's it called, topics and it, I've come to realize that they are all valid and deserve to exist not just the stuff that appeals to me right you know well uh, let's talk about something that appeals to you <laughs> <laughs> that, okay. uh, that that we've been meaning to talk about which is virtual idols virtual youtubers virtual youtubers virtual content creators on the internet because you seem to have very high expectations for this medium and its future. Yes. So I want you to just kind of introduce it and talk about it because you're the most qualified to do so. Um, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a gigantic virtual YouTuber fan the same way I know some other people are. Of course. But um, I, I will say, though, I think what we're looking at here is probably, like, going into the 2020s going to be, like, the one of the primary driving forces of otaku culture. Mm -hmm. um, in 20. In the 2010s, we kind of see this like paradigm shift um, in old taco culture. A lot of old mediums are dying out, like visual novels, yes. uh, rhythm games, fighting games, stuff like that. And in their place... And to clarify, huh? I want you to clarify that you mean this like cult as a part of otaku culture, those yes. things are waning. Because like, 
there will definitely be commenters saying the visual novels are not dying because uh, there definitely are a lot of successful visual novels, but they're not successful necessarily with the same crowd as before. Back or, back back in like two thousand eight or two thousand nine or whatever, yeah. uh, you weren't considered like a real otaku or whatever or a real fan or whatever. You weren't considered part of that crowd if you hadn't played like Fade or You May Miro Kusuri or stuff like that. Yeah. Sayana Uta was like considered, you know, essential reading if you right. were gonna be like on um, A or whatever. Nowadays, it's like, you know, who cares? Like, who's read Original Fate? You know, um, who's read Air or Canon or Clanad? Things that were considered like, you know, textbook stuff. You know, yeah. back in the mid or late two thousands. And the relevance of that sort of thing has really dropped. And it's largely been replaced by, like, gacha games and stuff like that. But but that's a discussion for a different time. Um, but we also see, like, a waning in things like television anime yeah. in favor of anime movies. And virtual YouTubers as a phenomenon that's popped up around the middle of this decade. Yeah. Um, like, I, I think I'd have to do more research. And thank God this is a podcast, not a video. Yeah. Um, because while I know like some early people like Eileen who were involved in the scene, um, it's really hard to know where, who originally had that idea. <coughs> hey, let's just create a virtual avatar with live two D and just stream that shit. But um, as a genre, it's massively grown. Um, it started out with a, a lot of like. What are you doing, man? I didn't tell you you could have that shit. Just, just a little bit. Motherfucker, you son of a bitch. Okay, now they're fighting over weed. Virtual YouTubers. Um, at the very beginning, you know. What's it called? They started out mostly doing things like skits, sketches, comedy videos, um, some reaction videos, um, gameplay videos. Um, but those were all highly scripted, um, produced by teams of like animators uh, that's nice. and voice actresses and stuff like that. So, um, but like in recent years, you see this like, you know, Cambrian explosion of new, you know, virtual YouTubers coming onto the scene. And the dynamic of this, like, medium has kind of changed. Before, it was almost like an anime thing of sorts. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you had, like, these virtual idols, virtual celebrities, and they were there to kind of entertain you with various things. But now it's kind of shifted into a streamer culture because of the ease of using things um, yeah. um, to create, like, virtual avatars and such. So what we're seeing is, is a lot of, like, and, um, men and women actually a lot of them very very young um, using um, these like um, virtual youtubers virtual youtuber personas as kind of an avatar to kind of stream themselves online yeah. um, not, not everybody is quite as much into the same level of role play as like the earlier you know people like you know uh, Kizuna Ai and whatnot but there's definitely this feeling that you know by having this you, you virtual persona you can, you know, ironically be more honest because yeah. you don't feel qu like they're Japanese, you know. You don't feel quite so embarrassed exposing yourself online. You don't have to worry about doxing or safety or whatever. And, you know, if your fans get attached to you, you know, they don't have to be super creepy because they'll be attached to your virtual persona instead of the person behind it. Right. You know, so that lets people hopefully. like... Hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully, right? Yeah. So that lets people let loose a little bit. And so it's just come to be this whole thing and it's really entertaining, and uh, you know, Japanese um, kids are watching it en masse, yeah. and it's... Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll have a debate with you about whether I think it's really entertaining. Uh -huh. There are elements of it that are really entertaining. It's entertaining enough you're doing this podcast. It's entertaining well, enough okay. that, I, that 24 we're, we're hours talking, since I've shown in, you. I'd say it's intriguing enough. I, I'd say that it's intriguing enough that we're doing this podcast. Entertaining is a different like discussion. Well, there are, there are elements, because, okay... <laughs> So the thing about virtual YouTuber is that it's just as broad of a category as YouTuber. I mean, there are YouTubers coming, obviously, fucking tons and tons of different oh, of styles. Oh, of course, of course. And, you know, you can do pretty much anything with the idea of just replacing a human actor with a virtual version of the same person. It's literally motion captured. So, like, people are acting. They are they're moving their bodies. They're using their voices. They're... they're you know, they're performing these characters, and the actor is definitely, like, a huge... Like, you can't imagine the character without the actor. Yeah. It would be a different character, you know? So it's not... It, th that's what really separates it from, like, Vocaloid stuff that I think a lot of people initially just look at it and instinctively compare it to. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you know, Hatsune Miku... There is no official Hatsune Miku, like, YouTube channel, you know? It's, like... 
it, it's a tool for anybody to use. A virtual YouTuber is not a tool. It is a person performs this character. They are, you know, they're, they're, there's a there's just a lot more of the person in the character, you know, than there is in like a something like a Hatsune Miku who could literally be performed by anybody, you know. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's quite this degree of flexibility that they can do anything they want. Um, but this is still like a very er, young medium. Yeah. So like you see a lot of the most of these like virtual YouTubers, whether they're male or female, kind of fall into this like, you know, a virtual idol stage where they're yeah. singing, they're dancing, they're doing, you know, videos and let's plays and stuff well, like that. Essentially, a lot of what they're doing is just like adapting forms of Internet content into virtual YouTubers. Uh, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Like, because like, uh, like, so if you were to watch the the virtual idol wa Miteru anime from last, yeah. from last year, uh, that show, it tries to present, like, a vertical slice of, like, here's the kind of stuff that virtual YouTubers do, yeah. you know? And you see ones who are, like, storytellers that are very similar to, like, creepypasta channels or similar to just, like, general storytelling channels. You know, you've got ones that are, like, just extremely specific personas. Some of them almost are, it, it kind of reminds me of the internet presented in Psychopaths, mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, it's like they have, like, a forums essentially that have like a leader and it's kind of like streaming but it's everybody's like inhabiting the space together there's stuff like that too so um in god once you start combining virtual idols in vr i have no idea where um kagia luna actually holds concerts in vr chat and there stuff you like go. that so um, um but what, what what i'm trying to say here is that a lot of them are kind of because it's a young medium a lot of them are trying to kind of like copy the early successes and try to do what yeah. they do um, like, Kizuna Ai is basically like the poster child for this entire thing. And she sings, she dances, she plays video games. So yeah. it's kind of been expected of any virtual YouTuber, especially when it comes to like their talent agencies and yeah. uh, management groups that they sing, they dance, they I play mean, video games, it's, et cetera. It's, it's like, very obvious. Like the, the thing about a lot of the content, and I guess this is what makes the streamers so refreshing, is that they don't make obvious content the same way. Oh, they, where, they absolutely make well, the obvious content I mean, they do, the same way. They like, do, but not... Uh, <coughs> let me re-explain that. Like, so... There are store. There are times where virtual, where the uh, virtual streamers will just tell stories about their actual life, like a real streamer would, um, which is obviously, it's obvious that it's something that is true of the real person. It's not the character. Whereas like Kizuna Ai is always the character. There's no, you don't see the real life person's life in her. You know that is true. Like the That's character is not made to speak the, the, about the, the, the actress. The character life. is the character is more or less you know written by a team of. Right. writers and stuff like that, you know. And, and like, the thing is that there are some, like, a lot of the virtual idols are, are just doing, like, the very standard YouTube content that is, like, it's obvious why it's successful. Like, a lot of the clips that you can find that have translations or subtitles are ones of them speaking English. And I think this is a huge, it's just, like, a big power move, basically, on the part of all of these guys, all these, whoever's managing these companies. Like, because most of these are under groups that have some kind of management. I think they're very much trying to push them to do reading English, because they subtitle those videos, they give them English titles, and Eng Americans fucking love to listen to Japanese people try to pronounce English words. It is endlessly entertaining. I will literally watch any of them do it, because yeah. it's always funny. Yeah, it's always funny. I, I want to hear how this one's going to mispronounce the words, you know? So, like, it, it's just such an obvious tactic to bring U.S. fans to it, and it's working. There's tons of English comments on these videos and in the streams. I mean, I wouldn't say, there's like, I wouldn't say there's, like, tons of fans yet, but it is it, a rapidly growing It's shocking how thing, yeah. many English uh, texts I saw in, like, particularly when they're speaking yeah. English, you know? I, I, think, I think I would compare, like, the state of um, virtual YouTuber fandom mm -hmm. in, like, 2020 to, say, the state of the anime fandom in, like, 2000. 2000 or 2001 or something like that. Where you just had like a very fledgling fan sub scene for seasonal anime. I would say that's like even later into the 2000s to have a really like, a f like, like, like fan subs being shared via well, oh yeah, like torrent. That would be like later on, yeah, you know. That's probably a little later. Maybe like maybe like two thousand two, two thousand three. Like I, I know a lot of like, people except, consider... except except there aren't like localized. You know, there's there's no like you know a virtual YouTuber being broadcast on Toonami or anything. So there's yeah. none of that initial contact. But there is still that like very fledgling fan base of just a handful of people translating it, yeah. like like the early fan subbing community. Well, and that was a, a very interesting point that you were bringing up is that 
<coughs> anime anime fan subbing is largely dead. Like there are still people doing it, but it, it's not very necessary because most shows get horrible subs releases, which which for, is just Crunchyroll. Like yeah, and and like even though we don't like those subtitles for people like us who can understand enough Japanese, we don't really care about the subtitles being accurate. Like I reverse translate a lot of it in my head. I I just disagree with the subtitle and move on. You know, like. Uh. I don't know if do you ever find that happens. That happens quite. I I mean, the real tragedy is the stuff auxiliary stuff that gets lost on the sidelines, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to when it comes to fan subs, I was I was talking to Digi about this earlier. I I mean, I miss all that stuff too. But like, it's just like at the end of the day, people are willing to trade off those benefits for speed and convenience. And and a lot of times, when you're when you're fan (laughs) sub, when you're fan sub, and I I mean, I used to be a fan subber. Um, a primary driving force was this feeling that we were necessary, that we were yeah. needed, that if we didn't do it, nobody else would, and right. so we absolutely had to. And I mean, to. that's why there are still people who very passionately sub Precure, and we will thank them yeah, forever. Yeah. Thank, thank God, like, Doremi. To be honest, yeah. but, to be honest, I think a lot of the fan subbers back in the day, they underestimate the the depth to what their work was. Like, oh no, 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 we were stuck up as shit. What, are, like, what are you talking about? No, no, no. Now, have, you, have you seen Eclipse's subs with a goddamn stupid karaoke? I've, I've no, seen, no, I've no, seen live no. evil subs. No, when I say they... when I say that, I'm not talking about just like the the stuff you did like on on its surface. Like the function of what they did, they thought that to a lot of you you guys you guys were on like I say you guys because I guess you are a representative of that of that like you know population. But, like, y'all were on freaking internet forums and you didn't really know who was where, but you knew a lot of you were in America and in English-speaking parts of the world. And that's one thing you were, you were confident in and you kind of, like, subtitled the anime from that perspective. But at the same time, the internet is a vast place. Yeah. And many people across the world like anime. Trust right. me. So the anime that you guys were subtitling... Obviously, that's what people in Africa were watching. That's what people yeah. in in the Middle East were watching. That's what people in like scant parts of a- anywhere I mean, that you like, see it. I mean, even the, so there are people who translate stuff even for those countries. Like too, I yeah. remember when I, when I was in when I was in a I've said this before. Like when I was a kid, I had this art TA, and he he gave me my first ever fan subbed anime. Like he gave me two DVDs of the first few episodes of Naruto Shippuden, and subtitled by Adapted by Your Fan Subs, and like. It I it's kind of crazy that I'm pretty sure that no one in Date Bayo ever really expected that their work would be ripped, put on a CD and like d- used in that way, yeah. and the fact that no one thought about that and no one cared to think about it that way is what was the magic of, like, I know I'm off topic from the VT shit, but that was what the the magic no, it's, was. It's fine. What that. Well, because the, the the community magic is kind of what we're we're talking about is is what he thinks is going to the VTubers yeah. because the. There is a ton to translate. And, like, okay, so one of the biggest things that has always uh, troubled me as an anime fan is that, uh, and this is something that, like, I don't think most Western fans really are cognizant of this until you start watching things like Genshiken, you start seeing all the, like, Japanese otaku media that was popular in the 2000s that was, like, that really tried to paint a picture of, like, the full breadth of what people were into. And it was way beyond anime. It always was. Video mm-hmm. games were vital. Uh, doujins, um, drama CDs, you know, any kind of album releases that were tied into the show. Uh, posters, you know, tie-in merch, events, event tickets. Like, just all this, this huge amount of otaku culture that those of us in the West could either experience vicariously or approximate. Um, or we could we could import a lot of those things, but we could never just go to an event unless you literally have the money to fly to Japan and go, which some people <coughs> do. Like that guy Omoe Kane does that. He will fly to Japan to see Yoko Kano perform, you know? But like that's a crazy high level. And like when you are when you get to the point where you start to realize how much scope there is, then you a lot of people, and I think you're one of these people more or less, look at it like, well, I have to learn Japanese or else I really can't participate in this because not enough of it's going to get translated. The American market is just for anime and manga. It's not very broad. It's focused on certain genres. And, like, now anime can hit the West pretty hard because of the fact that most of it gets subtitled. It gets broadly released quickly. It's got a chance. Manga is, like, 
even though the manga industry is like the healthiest it's probably ever been in America, it's still like fledgling compared to Japan. Like there's nothing in the face of how well, much they have. It, it's probably true that like scansations will never go away fully. Yeah. Just because of the sheer volume of it's, manga that Japan yeah. creates. And and scanslations are not even anywhere close to good enough. Like scanslations maybe well, translate less than like what percentage of manga do you think like new manga coming out, do you think it's translated? Because I would I'm say not, it's I'm not, not a very high percentage. I, I'm not sure. It's hard to say though, because like there, you have to understand like there's a staggering amount of manga that comes out of Japan. Yeah. And not all of it, actually most of it isn't read by a whole lot of people. Yeah. Like you know what's it called? But that's just. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's in, so ter in, ter in terms of in terms of readership, I would say like over 90% of relevant yeah. manga get translated, as in over 90% of the actual volume that people read. Right. But in terms of, you know, number of different manga, yeah, it's, obviously... It's it's a know. case of the law of the vital few in yeah. action, where the, the vital few is so few that it's just not worth it for them to try to translate everything. Exactly. And it... But... There have been groups that have done amazing work of translating <coughs> really obscure shit, um, and like... It's it's almost a shame because most of the time when people do that, they have a very particular fetish of some kind that they are translating this because it per it pertains to their fetish. Um, but if there's nobody who's translating like the things that you particularly want, then you're like, well, you know, I, mean, I mean, I mean, that's completely right. I mean, there's a reason yeah. I worked on that tomboy manga, right? Right. This is why something like Buchimaru Chaos can get something can get like translated so quickly. Yeah, Cause right. Because it, it fits it like it fits a very specific Ode Sama, like yeah. you know. Oh, you have to, there, there. There's this um. There's this manga. I forget what it was called. Um, Komari Song, and it was about this girl who did everything with her feet. Okay. That check got translated Amazing. in like twelve hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, okay. Oh, why am I not surprised? Yeah. But yeah, so the so the virtual YouTubing industry now the the this is the thing that made me the most hopeful about virtual YouTubing is there is a lot of official translation into English in this industry already, which is really good. It's because I mean, I, I, think, I mean, most I think most, that most, just... most most of these translations are provided by fans. Yeah, who get approval to put them on. Even, the, do you think on the, the ones like with the the hollow videos, like the? It's hard to say because at this like, point, it, it, them, I think that comes. I think captions. I really do think that comes with a like. No, I mean, but these, users users can submit their captions, which are then approved. Right, by the well, yeah, well, but let, like but these me, these guys. No, but let me put let me put this yeah. in perspective because like a lot of these younger people in in making this stuff are very aware that YouTube is like a, an English platform primarily. Yeah. So they know that it's only going to help them to have subtitles. Oh, it's, and it's it's only going to help the, them. The convenience is unbelievable because like. Americans, t technically, you like, uh, not that you can't, but you practically can't make a Nico Nico Doga account. You need to have, like, you need to sign up yeah. in Japanese. It's fine, because Nico Nico's dead anyways. That's why all well, the, that's, that's, that's why we have virtual that's, YouTubers and that's, that's virtual so, Nico Nico Doga. That is honestly what's so exciting about it, is that, like, Nico Nico has, even though I was huge into Nico in 2009, pretty much only in 2009, you know, but, but I, like, that, that culture was, was fascinating <coughs> to me. And there was tons of stuff that would get released on YouTube, and some of it would get big, but it all got big individually. Yeah. It did not speak to the culture behind the videos. Each one was just its own thing that might get popular. But, like, if you were on Nico, you saw how it was all an ecosystem, you know? And so for it's, you know, unfortunate for that ecosystem to die, but if YouTube has a new ecosystem for Japanese creators that is very inviting to Western fans, then it means, like, there's just a thousand times I like that better point. chances that, makes a lot that of it's going to break right? the West. Especially with you know? auto-translation software nowadays, it's like, yeah. even, even, what's it called, you can conceivably see streamers having their stuff just but, get, okay. like, auto-translated. What's the attention. blonde girl's name that I like so much? I uh, Mirai Akari. Akari. Mirai Akari. Mirai Akari has videos that are, um, okay, so first let me say, this is already a strategy I've seen implemented in Japan on channels before, where they will title, they'll have lots of long videos in Japanese, but they will make short videos with English titles that are made for English speakers. Toshio Okada was trying to do this a few years ago when he was like, I'm going to try to make my English speaking fans understand me. But he would make these like one minute videos where he was speaking English very poorly. It was not the best strategy. He kept saying he was going to subtitle his longer videos. I never saw any. Maybe some have happened. I don't know. But anyway. 
Um, so you go to this channel and you can very clearly see which videos are subtitled because the titles are in English. So you go watch those and they have official subs uh, through the closed captioning. So like I can actually subscribe to this channel and I can actually just watch one in six videos like I could any other YouTuber because it is literally being made for a Western audience to have that opportunity. That is no uh, drama CD ever got this treatment. None. Because there was yeah, no Bakadona visual got component. Dramas, got that treatment. As official? No, official of release? Not That's official. what I'm saying. These, these are the, 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 the virtual idol companies, the really big ones. Only them. But they, when they put out videos that are, that, and the Hollow Live uh, animations, which are fucking hilarious, um, the Hollow Live animated <coughs> shorts are like one to two minutes. There's a ton of them. They all have official captions and they all have English titles. So just go to the Hollow Live channel, look for the English titles. You're good. It's it's beautiful, but th like there's... Xavier Renegade Angel in Japanese. That's what I keep saying. Yeah, um, or like Take You in 3D. Yeah, that's uh, with virtual uh, with uh, with every virtual YouTuber mm -hmm. that works for this one company used his characters in it. It's pretty fucking. It's really well animated as well, uh, for 3D. <coughs> but um, but the but for the most part, these virtual YouTubers are doing their own styles of usually like more traditional YouTube content, but then occasionally just weird skits and shit posts and like. Just whatever, whatever they come up with that yeah, seems that interesting, shit. Yeah. and a lot of it's great. I mean, like they and the Mirai Akari, Mirai Akari, Mirai Akari. What's the one in the What's the one in the Chinese dress? What? The one of the in virtual YouTube. Oh, uh, Kimihina. Oh, yeah. Okay. That that that's the one. The two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The duo. Kimihina. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the the Mirai, she has like these videos that are just like skits that mm -hmm. are staged like in, in really interesting like they, they, they make them like films like sometimes you watch a video and it feels like you're watching an anime or just like a weird experimental comedy skit and like just the possibilities of what can be done with the motion caption software go way beyond what you can do with anime acting like mm -hmm. the, the acting in that one particular uh, uh, it seems shady but it's actually just an ad for tea video like there's like really specific emotive acting in that video that I was like, wow, like I've never seen an anime that like had a, you know, an, an animation of a conversation this detailed lasting this long, uh -huh. you know, this is something I can only get with this technology. And uh, it was it was really good. And I really liked that video. And uh, so, you know, there's stuff like that. And then there's stuff where it's literally just like a traditional Twitch stream, except for the girl is an anime character instead of a real girl, you know, um, just motion captured onto it. And so there's, you know, there's tons of live streams, just hours and hours and hours. At least I assume they live stream most of them every day, probably, or some of them every, some every of them. few days. Um, and uh, they, you know, they get clips of them translated by mm -hmm. fan summers in a in a way that's like it's kind of like this 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 will never be possible to industrially translate all of this yes. it's just not feasible like the reason like getting those little 5 minute translated videos is insanely powerful to getting like regular westerners to watch this stuff but imagine the power of having as much fan subbing for vtubers as there was for anime when we needed them mm -hmm. you know um, it would just, yeah, we would never cover everything, but you would make a way huger dent. And these these YouTubers could easily have full fledged careers on the strength of that fan subbing. Yeah, you know? of course. Um, at least you know, as in full fledged uh, Western aspects of their career. I mean to say. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I think it's a powerful thing. Yeah, I agree. That's why I showed it to you. But uh, personally, I will say that the Twitch streaming characters. Some of the highlights that people translate are funny mm -hmm. and interesting. I really enjoyed uh, Natsuhiro Matsuri's nipple story. The Band-Aid story, the Band -Aid yeah. story. It Look up, what was the name of it? The translation video. Huh? Like, only Band-Aids are necessary or something like that. You only All need you need are Band-Aids. All you need are Band-Aids. Yeah, uh, that was Jaeger's, yeah. Um, so look that up. It's a funny video. And, like, that's just, like, a f like somebody telling a funny story on a stream that is enhanced by... <coughs> the the character like mm -hmm. just the, the the weirdness of the way the character is animated but the way that like her voice plays into that it, it makes it very entertaining but um i think it's also a kind of story that most japanese people are not willing to tell on 
you know, Twitch or yeah. whatever. Because, you know, they're naturally shy and whatever. Yeah. But because they're effectively wearing this mask of a virtual character over themselves, yeah. they feel less restrained by social norms. They're like, we, I can share private aspects of my life without having to worry about it coming back yeah. to me. And it's particularly adorable listening to Japanese people explain private aspects of their life because they are so incredibly shy about yeah, it exactly, that they right. become, you know, just like balls of... Yeah, like, 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 but it's, uh, who, this girl might not even tell this sort of thing to her boyfriend or husband or whatever yeah. down the line, but she's willing to tell it to an audience of thousands of, um, you know, yeah. stream viewers because, you know, she's not really herself. So, right. you know, there, there's this kind of, like, degree of separation there. Though we don't know how much separation there is, she could literally be just like her character in real life for all who we know. Who knows what they call it. She did rope her brother into singing that uh, Shin Takura Jima song. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. yeah, Jimmy's been into that. I'm really into that. Yeah, song. you love that song. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, so, yeah, like, the, the videos where she's, like, playing video games and commenting over it or just doing, like, very typical live stream stuff. Super. Like, I mean, if you are into live streams, this is no different. The appeal is no different. If you like them, you would like this. The it's appeal is that there's an anime girl now. I never yeah. liked live stream before, live streaming before like virtual YouTuber streams. But now it's like there's Moe there. Moe changes everything. I never give a shit it about tapping before Moe. It doesn't make a difference for me because of the fact that I don't think of it as I'm actually watching this character play this video game. I can't. I cannot feel that way. I feel as though I'm watching just some Japanese teenage girl play a video game and there happens to be an anime avatar that I'm looking at and I, I would never be able to bridge that gap enough to like convince myself oh I'm watching this anime character play a video game I don't, and I even don't, then I would not want to watch an anime character play a video game it sounds I, I, don't, I don't think you necessarily need to bridge that gap I think one of the appeals of virtual YouTubers in general and virtual idols or yeah. well, I guess these are virtual idols is that there's like multiple layers to appreciate it on you know, you mm -hmm. have the person underneath, the role play above, you know. It's it's a little similar to, say, like, Love Live fandom, where mm -hmm. you have, you know, the anime with its characters who are idols in the show, and then you have, like, a, the voice cast are also celebrities, idols who do performances and stuff yeah. like that. So, you know, you can, <coughs> you can either appreciate um, a, a character as the character, the actress, you know, and there's this kind of like multiple identity here that you can relate to yeah. on a lot of different levels, you know. Just, sometimes for the worst, you know, one of them, you know, lots of hearts were broken when one of them ended up doing porn and another one of them ended up marrying some gay Japanese wrestler or something. Ugh. Amazing. Yeah, I know, right? I'm still pissed about that. God Why? damn, how do you take Suzuko Memori from me? <laughs> What was All his right. name again? You watch Japanese wrestling, right? Which one? What's the uh, what's the Oh wait. What's the oh, word what's oh, the word Kazuchi for a, Kata, the Yeah, word? I'm still pissed about what's, that. What's the oh word for God. a V buta? Huh? Uh, what's the what's the word for a V buta? Like a, 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 a V tuber buta. I don't know. Like a se buta, but for V tubers. A, a yeah, chu buta, I don't chu know. Buta, chu buta, chu buta, chu buta. That, that's that, that, that we first, came first, up with. First of all, that, first of all, I, I'm, talk, right I'm talking. Here. I'm talking about Suzuko Memori here. That's not a VTuber. I know. That, that is a voice actress <laughs> who is a slut who abandoned her fans for some fucking goddamn Japanese. She is, she's, a, she's a queen who's dating a king, and you yeah. just need to fuck off. Yeah. See, okay. he comes Let's upset. He comes there. upset because the seiyu he's talking about is currently dating like the ace of Japanese pro wrestling right now. Well, I guess he. Lost his title. This ah, time. see, that's what, that's what happens. That's what happens. He lost that's his title. Fucking karma! Kingdom. I swear uh, to God. Yeah, he lost his title at Wrestle Kingdom to uh, the, what's it called, Tetsuya Naito. <sighs> but like, you know, Kazuchika Okada is a pretty cool dude. He's a cool dude, but he's no, he's no um, what's his name? He's no. He's not good enough for her. Oh, what's what's this other guy's King name? King of Strong Style. No, no, that's that's Nakamura. No, I'm thinking of Tanahashi. Like Tanahashi's a fucking common rider fan. Uh, Tanahashi's like a full on weeb. Like he was in Garo. Mm -hmm. Like he he was he was like he plays Garo's ancestor in Garo. Like, oh really? The, yeah, the wrestler. He's that's really cool. It's yeah. He's it's really it's actually a really cool like cameo that he makes. Yeah. But yeah. New Japan, I don't know, man. Like this, the whole industry, all those industries are connected. The wrestlers, yeah, yeah, the yeah, same. Yeah. Point they all, is, they all go, they all go eat hot pot together and, and go get yeah. and go get followed but, by uh, industry executives. Back, 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 back before I went on this like rage induced threat, um, 
I think that's kind of the appeal of the internet in a lot of ways. You can have multiple layers of ident identity. Maybe you don't get this because your identity is just you. You're you're kind of like the same whatever no, platform I have, you're on. But I have definitely multiple layers of identity in my character. I think that's very identifiable. Really? But, uh, uh, the, I mean, I totally get what they're doing. It, it's the the thing is, the actual content of the material <coughs> is often literally a a girl playing Minecraft like and and yeah, reacting to things the same way PewDiePie would react and to it's them. funny and I think it's you're not, not funny it's not you're not giving it's it enough of funny. a chance you're not giving it enough of a I, chance I don't I've never liked that type of content like yes it doesn't do anything for me to hear people react to things I I've, I've, I don't have strong reactions I've to also things. never liked nature documentaries until they put anime girls on them like you know, you you I, have to you have to understand type, how big of a difference Moe can make. I'm not the type of make. person who gets into everything just because the cute girls are. Yes, you are. No, I'm yes, not. Yes, you are. I do not. Yes, want, you I are. I don't you care about exactly Yamano Susume. Of. I don't care about Yuru Camp. I don't care about uh, fucking uh, any of those fucking shows. We are sitting in a room surrounded with things that you got into because of your obsession. Yeah, with cute I got girls. into Gozu because of cute girls. I got into Gundam Origin One because of cute girls. Yeah. Gintama because of cute girls. Ain't no cute girls in Gintama. What are you talking about? What's it called? Uh, uh what's his name? You face? can't even Shin name Shin one. Shinpachi. Shinpachi. Yeah. The the glasses boy. Yeah, he's, he's uh, a cute girl. Yes. To you? All right. Yeah. How many episodes have I seen? You, 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 got, you, got, you got Gwenpool. Hajime no you got Ipo. Gwenpool. You got a poster of Gwenpool here. That's <laughs> the most. That's the most moe thing you can have a poster of. Yeah. Gwenpool. Yeah, that's a perfect that's example. Most, of shit, people got it because the most, of the cute girl. That's the most moe thing you can have. Wait, where's the Gwenpool poster? It's, it's right, right over there, there on the door. On the door. That no one can see because this is a fucking podcast. Yeah. Right. Uh. Well. So, like, my biggest interest in the in the virtual YouTubers is just like. I, I, it seems like beyond any current trend or, or past trend, there's just so much possibility of what could be done that, like, it will definitely continue to evolve and grow. Because, like, I mean, just the idea of using motion capture to make yourself into a different character to make videos with is just obvious. And, like, it, I think that... YouTubers have historically always tried to put ourselves on green screens, put ourselves into skits and into videos, and it's like, most of us are, are boring looking, regular fucking people who nobody wants to look at, and we should not be on camera. We should be represented by cool anime people. Yeah. Like, with no reason to yes. stick with reality and yes. be better. What? Oh, oh, yeah, high five, Digi. High five. You get it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's, that's the wave. That's the that's wave. Enough. It, like, that, it's exactly the reason why. Nine of YouTube are coming soon, baby. It's exactly the reason why. What's it called? Uh, the fucking Moe shit makes streaming so much better. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Everything's more palatable when you have a cute. I mean, I would encourage it. everybody to go and explore virtual YouTubers for yourself and just find out what you like because there's a lot of variety. I mean, we've only I, covered a see, couple of people that we've really gone into any depth about just because I literally, I literally have only there, been watching them for today yeah, and I've already yeah. found my waifus, Himehina. They're the best. Like, they're just these two cute girls who like, they have this one video where they're like, like, <coughs> one of them says an English anime title and the other one has to guess what the Japanese title is and it's, the most, it's, book, it's yeah. the most adorable and, uh, thing. Uh, there's actually a lot of people who do that. It's, like, like a pretty common thing. Their show uh, is basically a Japanese, like, morning variety show. Yeah. But with yeah. virtual uh, 3D idols. Yeah. It, it's also really interesting the different types of technology that, that are used in it. Because some of them are, like, full 3D. Some of them are just the real 2D. Um, some some of them actually really pushed that back. Like, um, Niji Sanji, um, which basically contract out a lot of, like, cell phone stuff. And have a lot of, like, what's it called? Small-time VTubers, but also some larger ones. But the point is, like, they half the time when they stream there's no animation at all there's just a picture of their anime avatar yeah. and them playing a game or something um, because like that's really convenient or something sometimes they don't want to hook up the technology or whatever um, so like you'd be watching a Shizuoka Ren um, main stream and it's just like what's it called uh, just a picture of her avatar but like nothing's just, there's, there's no like virtual part of it it's just a picture of her avatar for her playing some games or something like yeah. that so which really pushes that boundary of how little can you get away with, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and still be, quote-unquote, a virtual YouTuber. 
But yeah, there's there's a huge diversity in technology. Oh, what was the name of the one that we called the like serial experiments lane of uh, virtual yeah. reality? Uh, Hatobatsuku. Hatobatsuku. That Hatoba shit was. Tsuku? Tsuku. See, I, see Tsuku? you know what? You know what? That that shit is decidedly not for me. But because I know it's not for me, oh, it what me it, that, she has it, such it, a huge it, family. It, yeah. it lets me know exactly who, exactly how many people it's for. Because that yeah. that's a, that's uh, a there, there, she has a lot of fans. For yeah, reason, that's like. a that's a bit that you could definitely get people into because I've never been into that kind of anime in the first place. Like right. Ergo Proxy Lane, like they're good shows, definitely. But that's you should, always you should, and you should all definitely search her name. Up it's on really Pixar. funny that you're comparing it, like. Like if you compare it to Ergo Proxy and Lane, it's gonna give you an idea of like, oh, this is some heady <laughs> shit. No, no, no it's literally it's not. just a a very sad looking girl going about her everyday life, but she just has a character design that apparently lends itself to lots of dojins of her getting like brutally <laughs> beaten and raped. They I guess. should, they should like, they should on some level try and like incorporate that back into the meta canon of the of the the, the tuber itself. What? No, no, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. You you don't have any idea of how brutal this stuff is. It's oh, like, no. oh my, I don't even want to think about it. I mean, the, the, yeah, but like that would that, like if they not maybe like directly. If, if they it? put one percent of that stuff into their videos, they would get like bad in like, <laughs> thirty seconds. Oh gosh, they would get bad faster. Even even, even imply even like heavily implied. Yes, like like, it, like they would get bad faster. <laughs> then you, know, you, you get bad from Yandere Dev's oh you know, Discord God. server. Like. Yeah, oh my days. So uh, <coughs> the the th- that that's one of many experimental different channels using the concept for again. It could just literally be like any aesthetic, any idea. The the potential is basically limitless, and like I have to like the technology is obviously there, so Americans can do this too, and like. Obviously, using cute moe girls is the is the, the the easiest, most viral way to spread something like this. But like, there the the amount of designs we could do. I mean, there's one guy who's a gorilla, you know. Like, I love the gorilla guy. I don't, like a, guy. I don't know why you don't like the gorilla guy. I don't know why you like don't like the gorilla guy. I love the gorilla. I have no problem with. I like him. He's funny. I, uh, when the fucking gorilla started saying "goddamn lemon" of all things, and the fucking lips started, <laughs> fucking gorilla, <she> <laughs> <laughs> fucking gorilla. I love but but yeah, gorilla. I mean, like gorilla is obviously another easy mimetic concept, but you could do. Anything. I could be a Porygon. I could be. Uh, I could be a wireframe man. I could hi, be a... hi, Gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I had an I know YouTuber, I would do a cover. I would you guys, have... you guys just sound like you're talking yourselves into making v- virtual YouTube. I want one. I, I want obviously, one. I would. I would, the, I would the make. I would make. Are I would make. I Like the the video that we need to make that would let us both like that 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 would make us need to make our characters for this. We need to make a, a cover of these two characters dancing to Yatta. Like, yatta, Yatta, Yatta. Okay, first of all, like, <laughs> the, the, this is 2020. Nobody gives a shit about that's Yatta the, That's the point. That's the point. If you, you wanted got, to make got, something uh, people cared about, make a cover of fucking Shin Takarajima, as you nah, like that song. No, 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 no. You got you to do, you you do a cover of something that people have forgotten about. You got to bring yeah. it back. You got to bring it back into their heads. Like, we got to remix it. it. Oh, man. man. That would be... Yo, oh. yo, 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be the stereotype that Japanese. Okay, by the way, what is it with Japanese people thinking that all black people say, hey, yo, yo, hey, hey, yo, 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 like why is it that black? Why is it that like? Okay, so we were watching this like uh, VTuber. And she was it playing. Was, she it was, was playing. Natsu, Natsumi. Natsu. Who is Natsu? Matsuri. Natsumi. Which? which who, who are you talking about? Matsuri Natsume. Natsume. No. Which one are we talking about? The, the which one. Video? The video. She was saying, hey, 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 yo, The yo, one where she was playing GTA oh, Five. Oh, uh, Natsu Hero Matsuri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So like, she was playing GTA Five, and like, she was playing as Franklin, and like, she, <coughs> she was just like saying, hey, 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 yo, 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 like, like, well, as she was harassing people in the game, like, as if she was trying to impersonate her. Like, I don't, I don't know exactly what what she was going for but yeah. like it felt strange that she was playing a black character and saying hey hey, 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 hey yo, yo, yo 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 she kept saying hey boy hey boy hey boy, boy, hey, boy. boy. Hey, boy. <laughs> like it's like why <laughs> that's just so weird what like uh i would i genuinely would like to meet more japanese people like and on a not even on like a on like a heavy note, just get what the vibe is with yeah. them and black people. Like what? What do you? What? What? Like let's let's get it. Let's just get all of our, all out of our systems and figure out what like the jokes are that they say. Make a virtual like, YouTuber. You can meet them online. You know. That would. You know what? You are probably you. 
if you get in now, you'll be the first <laughs> black virtual YouTuber. <laughs> no. and you'll be able to say that at the start of every video. Yo, it's not yo, first, first black virtual First black VTuber. First black VTuber. Yo, you want to be a VTuber, you want to be a VTuber brother. Oh, uh, VTuber brother. Oh, yo. True brother. True brother. True brother. True brother. Oh man, they would love me over there. They would, they would, they would love me. They would, they, they wouldn't understand what I was saying, but I feel like they would, they would like the vibes. They would enjoy the vibes, you know, they, they, like, they, like that. And, and that's essentially what we're, we're I think enjoying. You could be, I think you could be an easy crossover success as long as you put <laughs> Japanese subtitles on your video. Oh, just my... get econ and reverse translate well, them. Why the fuck would I do that? <laughs> because it would be, it would, it would, literally, it would literally be your end to this industry. Let's do it. I don't need fucking that shit. I don't want you to fucking drag me down. If you became down. his manager, then you could. Uh, I don't want to be Jimmy's but, manager. But, but think about it. If the Japanese, I, I, it was hard enough being Jimmy's roommate. If I don't the Japanese Jimmy. like his character, then you might get invited. You guys might get invited to Japan to have him be in some collab with all the other. Yeah. So, so so what? I fucking be stuck around Jimmy as his fucking bitch boy. No, I would not. I would never do that. Propagate this industry that you love from the inside. Yeah. I don't want to do it with him. Wow. That, that's. That that's a very I mean, different sort of thing. I I wanted to I do mean, with I I don't blame anybody for not wanting to work with a guy who be for either of us when we just spent all day smoking <coughs> weed and sitting on the couch like literally like twelve straight hours you to know the point what? that like, I blacked like out like fucking goblins. I mean we <laughs> all, we also watched a lot of VTubers though. Yes. We did watch a lot of VTubers. I, um, all right. I think we should conclude this VTuber conversation by recommending just a few, like even just like two or three, so we don't overload people a piece. Okay. Um, Mirai Akari, that's her name? Mirai Akari, yes. Mirai Akari. She's one of the bigger ones, uh, one of the four I, divas. I highly recommend watching her translated in English video. It's a weird style of humor, but if you like it like <coughs> I do. And then also the... What's the combined channel? The Hollow Hollow Live. The the it, Hollow Live is a group that manages a lot of like different VTubers. Right. It's, sometimes they get together and do like these skits. They they have a group yeah. channel, so if you look for the Hollow Live like official channel, you can link it all. They right? have yeah. these like little two minute skits that are also all translated into English that I think are fucking hilarious. You can just link all this, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I can put links. But uh, what what do you recommend? As a few virtual YouTubers, you want people to get into. Um, what's it called? Well, last night, um. Well, when I was really getting digging into virtual YouTubers for the first time, I started out with Natsuhiro Matsuri because, you know, she's got this, like, energy about her. She's spicy. She's very... She's uh, a great character She's uh, got a great character design. She's it's got like a... It's more emo-esque. Yeah, right? In a way. Very funny. What's it called? Kind of, like, you know, real... You know, the, she's and, very like down and, uh, to earth, and down to earth, and also a lot of like translated content. That's the main yeah. thing. She has a lot of a couple of passionate fans working. Uh, do you want to recommend any scan the translator channels? Because you were showing me some of those. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah, like Hollow Life moments, uh, Eager, tr I Iger translation, something like that. Um, those were mostly do like Matsuri and stuff. There's just too many like translator channels to kind of list them all because mm -hmm. they, unlike the VTubers, they aren't really centralized. Right. Like you'll you'll have like a group that does like clips from Niji Sanji and stuff I mean, like there's, that. But... There's, I saw a playlist that was just called translated VTuber yeah. clips that was like 1,200 <coughs> Exactly. Right? So I would assume they're trying to track everything. I, I, um, I don't think they're going to be able to do it. But yeah, um, Natsuhiro Matsuri. That, that uh, yeah. Right now. But um, Matsuri is like a great gateway drug of sorts, you know, because yeah. because she has a lot of funny clips, a lot of translated stuff, so that's why I showed it to Digi. I mean, I honestly think that, uh, like... Oh, no, oh, no, the... The, it's actually got 3,100, 3,174. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I think that like if you wanted to just literally plunge into this and figure out who you like, just play that playlist and skip videos that you're not enjoying. Because like, it, fucking everybody's in there. Like Everything that's translated practically. Yeah, right. So just go go in. I, 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 I would wager to say there's like, more stuff than I mean, that's translated. I, I like. mean, the thing is, because in, in, I've been kind of pressing you because... You showed me a lot of Natsuhiro Matsuri, and uh, I I have to suspect that you are ju she's just your favorite because like to me the way to go about getting into this would be that like you have to find who your favorite is you yeah know? like you really are gonna have to just like scroll through I each already one found who my and I've already found yeah. like I mean it doesn't have to take no, long no, you know no, not even who your favorite is first of all you need to find out what kind of VTuber like you like yeah. like cause stream, the stream like as much as you can't say as the streams are like the, the big hotness right now not everyone's gonna be into streaming when it comes to yeah. VTubers there's a lot of like 
skit content that they do and a lot of like yeah, yeah well, like it, and it, it's something i was talking to you about because you were saying that you think the streams are, are sort of becoming like the main focus but uh like the the thing about streaming that is it can never it streaming will never be like the only industry that's big because of the fact that it's so competitive that there's only ever going to be like a sure, handful of streamers. Of course, streamers of who course, are big, I'm not going to deny know? it. And but, so, like, but every... it just doesn't have the same like lun like uh, the individual streamers might come and go, and it, some have longevity, some don't. But there will be tons of imitators who just never accomplish anything because they have to compete with sure, streamers. Sure, of course. I mean, granted, it's not like you can't li like I could. You know, I can make streams where I make a, a pretty decent amount of money, mm -hmm. even with only a couple hundred viewers. Yeah. So, like, it's really about the passion of your fans more so than the size of your fan base, of course, ultimately. Of so I do think there's room for there to be, you know, really independent streamers, but they really have to bring something unique and new to the table, which maybe it'll be healthy and thriving in that sense. Like, there's a ton you can do with streams, especially with virtual YouTubers. I, I, I don't think virtual YouTubers have quite reached that critical mass we see here on like, right. Twitch. Like, there, there's a lot of them, but there's not quite that many, yeah. you know? To, to the I point mean, where it, like there's everything there's a lot of setup involved in getting this yeah, done. You know, right? like you need to know an artist, and that's probably the biggest <coughs> hurdle most people are gonna have. You uh, know? But on top of that, it's kind of like um, I, I when it comes to streaming, you'll find basically every virtual YouTuber, even if they have like emphasis on like what's it called um, uh, skits and stuff like that, they will stream to some extent. That that's just like unavoidable. Right. I, I think that's just part of being well, a YouTuber it's nowadays. It's just the easiest like, way to make money. Yeah. I mean, right? Like. If, for me, I could. There are things that I could do it as like a scripted video, and it would be better and it would get more views, but it still could make less money than if I had just live streamed while doing the same exact thing because there are people who would just feel more compelled to participate in a live stream. Like they, they give you money because they want to be in it, you know, and they want to be reacted to potentially. And so, like with virtual idols, I mean. It's so obvious that they're going to make bank on live mm -hmm. stream chat that like yeah it seems like a great idea. The the market this is this market this is something I want to talk about. This market is so much healthier than American YouTube. It's unfucking believable because so uh, in America, I feel like there was an early period when YouTube first started blowing up. And Jimmy, you've been around for all this, so you can help me out with this. But I feel like when YouTube was really starting to hit it big like around the the turn of the decade into the 2010s, um, there was an attempt to make like stars out of certain big YouTubers all right, that so all let fell me, flat. Let, okay, so let me know? actually, because I actually do know some of the uh, the history behind some a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Big companies like uh, I'm sure you guys know Maker for one, yeah. and uh, Machine or owned by uh, Disney, owned by Disney, da, da, da. but there were other ones as well. I don't know all of the parent companies, but I do know the ones that the the people they owned, like SourceFed yeah. was owned by these folks. Right. Um, like Nerdist is still owned by these kind. Nerdist is one of the only su success stories out of that wave. Mm -hmm. Um. You, you had all of these things. They said, all right, there's these YouTubers who have their individual platforms and their own individual, right. you know, talent. Let's see if we can put them... Like, even even the fine... Like, not the fine bros. The fine bros did do this as well, but yeah. even the... um. Like Hank, Hank Green and Frank, like yeah. and the yeah, John Green, they were they were trying to get in on it. They're like, hey, let's try and get these dudes to act as like kind of like independent talent scouts. Yeah, where they go and like it, 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 it all. Did not, it, well, it did. Okay, there were. I think that even before that, even before the era of the MCNs, there was an early attempt to market like uh, Smosh. You know, like they had a movie. Like yeah. there were early YouTubers who got movie deals or who they basically. In the early days of YouTube, everybody saw it as an inherently lesser medium than other mediums. Yeah. Nobody took it seriously as its own thing, even though it was super successful <coughs> and popular. Um, and part of that was because people weren't didn't have as easy access to making money through it. But like, they would always try to like break into the old media, and it just did not work. Like, YouTubers didn't make good movies; they made good YouTube videos, and, and a lot of the charm was in the way they were. Doing and a lot it that of that way. was because when these guys got big, like, yeah. okay, so here's. Here's the reason. Here's the thing, because what you're discuss, what you're describing, never stopped. What the yeah. only thing that changed is how they did it. What happened was when these guys got big, they have to go in front of a board meeting, yeah, full of all these producers and executives, and now they're like, all right. What do you bring to the table? What can we do with you? What can you make? Yeah. Like, like these guys have never heard of a fucking Smosh. Yeah. These guys have never heard of a fucking upvote in their lives. Yeah. They're, they're movie producers or they're, they're, they're executives. They don't care about any of that stuff. What they care about is what can you what can you do? Right. Like, and 
then when that question comes up, it becomes, all right, I'm a YouTuber, but they're asking me, what can I do? Well, I guess I can make a movie if I've done YouTube. Yeah. And then they say, all right, we'll hook you up with all of these people who, because as you just said, YouTube is a lesser medium, they'll hook you up with the least talented folks. Right. Like they'll hook you up with the, the people who they don't, who they know, like music video directors and shit. You know what I mean? Well, because like, they're, <coughs> thinking, they're thinking, oh, well, you already can... You already are popular yeah. working with nothing, so you just work your magic. And it's like, it's not the same. It's you not can't the make same. a good movie which is, the same Which way is you the reason why, video. when I say like the th- what we're describing still happens, it just doesn't exist the same yeah. way. Those ex- Either those execs got, got wisened up or the people talking to them got wisened up. Because yeah. now instead, what they're doing is not trying to say, okay, what can you do? What they're doing is saying, see what you're doing right here? keep it keep yeah. this exact thing that you're doing what we're gonna do is bankroll it from the back end yeah and let you grow this to a let you be the biggest version of what you currently are except and that they don't do it like, <laughs> because the the mcns like they the only people who have ever been helped on youtube are like the mm-hmm. biggest channels yeah that, that got hooked up right. with like real talent scouts but like all the multi-channel networks they claimed to be talent scouts. Like, they yeah. come to you like, we're going to put you in contact with sponsors. I mean, we're going to help you manage your schedule. We're no, but, like, that. that yeah, I mean, no. I mean, I mean, MCMs, MCMs are always... Well, no, MCMs have always been a scout. Like, I, that, mean, I, mean, I mean, it's really hard, once ago, for me to say whether the current idol networks or virtual YouTuber networks yeah. are any better than MCNs because some of them I've heard good things about, some of them I've heard bad things yeah, about, I mean, and I'm sure there's lots of stuff yeah, the behind the time, scenes yeah, that yeah. you won't know unless I, you are a virtual it's, it's, YouTuber. It's like, right? it's, At the same time, they're not a monolith as well because because yeah. I have a lot of friends who say they love their MCM. Yeah, they, right. they, they say they love yeah. they say they love their networks. And they I mean, like okay, I think a lot of I've seen a lot of people who love their MCNs, and for a long time. I wanted to be on one because I, I wanted to, people would say things like, oh, I had this copyright strike, but my MCN took care of it, right? And I was always like, what the fuck? Like, how do they do that? Like, how do they have extra connections? They don't. They just do the same thing that you can do by yourself, and those people don't know how to do it by themselves. So the MCN just takes money for them to do something that that person could have done by themselves. They just didn't know. Because, like, there is no extra ability they have to combat your copyright strike than what you have. Yeah. They have no other tools at their disposal. And I learned that because I went with an MCN for a while. Me too. And I eventually had to, I had to very, like, it felt like I was in a pyramid scheme. You know, and like when I quit, I had to like like basically scream at like take me the fuck off this network or yeah. I will make drama videos about you. You know, like which I did anyway, of course. But like, you know, they, it was just, it's like they they don't actually, they I think that they got in, they tried <coughs> to do something with YouTubers, realized they couldn't do anything with them because the appeal is in what they're already doing, mm-hmm. and then they just started taking their money and saying they were going to do something for them, and then not doing anything. They just don't, they didn't actually do anything. And also, you have to accept and, that, we also have to accept, I made this one, uh, this one take video where it was like, we are the weird part of YouTube, and it's like, no. the thesis of that video was that me, you, like anyone who makes video the kinds of videos that we make yeah. by the standards of what we used to call the weird part of YouTube yeah. we are now the weird part of YouTube oh yeah like we are not what people find just by using this site you well, cannot you, you can, the, the natural the natural processes of using a YouTube yeah. of using a YouTube account will not lead you to our channels unless you specifically go down a certain rabbit hole right. I, i.e. the weird part of YouTube like yeah and I, I mean that's always been true. And and because it's, just, but, it's so odd to me that yeah. like, th- so I have you know over three hundred thousand subscribers, yeah. right? Natsuhiro Matsuri has a hundred and like ninety seven something like she has less than two hundred thousand. Yeah. So like when I see the level of effort that is being put into uh, making her able to have a career, and it's not that it's an outrageous amount. It's just like. Clearly, they're they're making sure that she is connected with other people who are working for their company. They do collaborative videos using their characters and, and acting that are actually good. You know, they're wait, so, wait, can I, can, wait. You can. I've actually got one more important question. What? I, this might be a no-brainer. But who, at the end of the day, for a lot of these characters, who owns the right? Hmm. Frankly, that is, not, that, is that a, such a is that a very weird kind of worms to discuss yeah that's actually kind of a complicated question i'm not quite sure whether it's owned by the companies whether it's owned by the character designers themselves whether the actresses have anything to do with it because 
unlike un- this is a big distinction between. I mean, like, I assume that they sign a contract and they sign up for these companies. Yeah, so yeah. There will be a. De- there's definitely an answer. You know? Yeah, but when it comes to things like um, virtual YouTubers, one of the things that really differentiates them from um, what's it called, just regular old Joe Billy Joe streaming, is that they cannot be fully organic. Like Billy yeah. Joe decides, I want to stream. Okay, he gets Tons his comp- uh, tons on OBS. Yes. Let's get he has con- yeah. complete control of himself. He can do whatever he wants. Well, That's this, on him. There's the Live 2D software. You, you need you you need like a team of two to three people yeah. to get started as a VTuber at the very least. Once you're there, you can more or less handle it by yourself if you know you're just the actress or whatever. But it's like at the very beginning, in order to get the concept and the ball rolling, you need like a model, you need like whatever. So it can no, never be just the, the honest expression of one person, right? Yeah. It's always like... Unless you're Pochi Goya. Yeah, unless you're Pochi Goya. But um, <laughs> it, it's always going to be like a couple people working together. And so the, the rights there, I'm not really sure how it worked. I wouldn't know mm-hmm. what's it called. I, I know that... I'd be interested to know. I mean, yeah. I want to know what kind of deal they're getting because just like... You know, again, whether it's like a ton of support or not, like it's clear that there is organization behind these people. Uh, you know, they, <coughs> they, there's a recognition, even just the fact that the stuff's getting translated into English, right? Like, why did no company ever come along and offer to translate my videos into Japanese? You know, like, why would nobody think, hey, this is anime analysis content. This could appeal to people in the the country where anime is biggest. You know, like let's make a deal with you where we'll translate your videos for a cut of your revenue or something. Like I probably would have taken that up, but nobody's ever offered that. Like that's not nobody's thinking about the potential of what content on this level on YouTube can do, except for the people who you know who saw this virtual idol thing and went oh like we know exactly how to market this you know like we know how to make this a success well is there anything else you guys want to talk about Mm -hmm. honestly this heat is making it really hard to think yeah it's getting really hot in here so we're just gonna fucking stop that's it for the 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 three super villains of any Twitter, Twitter podcasting Twitter. about VTubers. Any Twitter's most wanted, or yeah, the, any Twitter's the, most wanted. The, the three, the three, the notorious three. Yeah, the three, the three God King, the three Devil Kings of anime. The Hokago Boys. The Hokago Boys plus you can. Yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, that's that's where can where do you guys want to be found? You want to plug anything on here? You can follow me at n i n zero u h nine zero at nine o. N I N zero U H nine zero. I'm just gonna put links to all this. You can, yeah, you, you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you don't have to. Also, just, just also, say what website. SoundCloud, Twitter. SoundCloud is is nine zero. YouTube. Uh, YouTube. YouTube. Econ. You know, I'm on. sure. I'm sure Digi will link everything relevant in the description. You're on and, YouTube and Twitter. Yeah, and well, I'm on plenty of other things, but. There's other parts of my you wanna, presence you online. Do you want to any manga that you're working on? No, because I don't want people to find out. Oh, which um, ones I read Jigoku Raku, read Hito Gatana. Um, I'm working on any of those. I'm saying, I'm telling people to read them. Okay, they should. Yeah, yeah. Uh, re- read, read, fucking read a book. You know? <laughs> read a book. 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 Read a